lot of our listeners know that our economy and our workforce, our middle class has been devastated by a series of uh, agreements that are described as trade deals, but really involve things other than uh, simply trade as they're commonly understood. Now, another one is is likely to come before Congress, before the end of President Obama's term. Here to talk about that and now with us is Lori Wallach. Lori is the director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. She has held that position for more than 20 years. She's an expert in the operation and outcomes of these trade kinds of trade deals and policies, NAFTA, WTO, Fast Track, all of that stuff. She knows it inside and out, and she joins us now. Lori, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you. Uh, listen, the big development right now in in the the uh, latest trade agreement has been, uh, which is, um, well, we'll talk about it in a second, but there's a new report on it from the International Trade Commission. First of all, if you would, in your own words, just briefly describe the deal, and then we can talk about the new report. Um, what is it we're likely to see voted on, perhaps in the lame duck session of Congress this year? So the Trans-Pacific Partnership is an agreement with 11 Pacific Rim and Latin American countries that was negotiated for more than seven years behind closed doors with more than 500 official trade advisors representing corporate interests. A final deal was reached in October, and the text was made public in November. And what was revealed was what was called a trade agreement but what actually is an incredible basket of rigged rules and new rights and privileges for corporations that would elevate formally their power relative to countries, to all of us who live in those countries. And this new study basically shows that just like most of the TPP has nothing to do with trade, but it has to do with increasing corporate power, the TPP has very little upside for trade and lots of potential job loss and economic sector damage downsides. So this new government report by the International Trade Commission is sort of the official U.S. government projection of what this means for the economy, and it was grim. So, you know, it's funny. I didn't see a lot of headlines about this when it came out. Uh, it's not like they publicize this. So when you you, you say it's, and, and understandably so, since it doesn't buttress their argument, but um, when you say it's grim, what do you mean? Give us some examples, well, if you would. Yeah. First, let me just give you a little context. The ITC is an independent agency, but traditionally its reports on trade agreements have had these incredibly positive projections. And part of the reason why is they use a particular kind of methodology in doing their studies that basically creates some certain economic artifacts as data, but that makes a lot of assumptions that are just absurd. So their model of, of, of estimating trade agreement benefits, just to put it in perspective, said that NAFTA would increase our small trade surplus pre-NAFTA with Mexico. And, of course, as you know, we have over a $100 billion trade deficit with Mexico under NAFTA. Or they said the China trade deal, you know, oh, it will only increase our trade deficit with China by $5 billion, and instead it's increased it by $150 billion. So these guys are always in how they do their studies because they presume things like full employment, no increase in the trade deficit, and a lot of things that just make no sense. So when they do a projection like this one where they show 36 of 55 economic sectors that they studied – manufacturing, services, energy, natural resources, would all suffer declining trade balances if the TPP were implemented, you know we are in deep, deep trouble under this agreement. If the ITC is that bad, Nelly bar the door about what this is really going to mean. So, in other words, just to you know, just to recap, Lori Wallach. So they stack the deck outrageously, is what you're saying, in favor by their assumptions, in favor of these trade deals. But despite stacking the deck, the American people lose the card game big time on this deal. Bingo. 
Yeah, all right. So, so in in many many sectors, even according to this wildly optimistic misprojection, in many many sectors, uh, the American people lose out on trade. Overall, the American people lose out on trade under this deal. That's what that's what we're getting out of this. And uh, so, what this I guess what this should say is that there's no way that everybody talks about how everybody who supports these deals, including the president, say, well, you know, we can't. Uh, we can't, we can't not trade with the rest of the world, but we're trading with these countries now. It's just that the deficit gets worse, right? Exactly. This is not a choice between trading with these countries and not trading. This is a choice between having an agreement that literally would elevate individual corporations to equal status with entire nation states to privately enforce new rights and privileges they would get in these agreements by dragging whole countries to tribunals of three private sector attorneys where they could demand compensation from us taxpayers for any government action or policy that an investor claims violates the new investor rights granted in TPP. It does not matter if the Supreme Court said that policy is okay. It does not matter if it applies equally to domestic and foreign companies. It does not matter if it was passed by referendum in a state. If a corporation can tell a tri get a tribunal of three private sector attorneys to decide that it violates their TPP rights, they get cash out of our treasury. And this is a right that does not exist for governments to sue corporations. There's no rights that they owe us. It's just corporations can sue governments. So there is no – I mean, I think the best way this was put was by Vice President Biden's former chief economist, Jared Bernstein, who wrote in his blog, you know, you look at the government study, which is supposed to be the cheerleaders, and there's no upside here. Like, the, the I mean <laughs> – the upside the estimated was in 15 years, we would see 15 one hundredths of 1% of increased economic growth. What that means practically is that we would, with the TPP, reach the same level of U.S. economic growth on January 1st, 2023, as we would on February 14th in 2023. So that and would be the entire gain for tribunals of corporate attacks for jacking up medicine prices because the big pharmaceutical firms would get new rights to have longer monopolies and block competition, for Wall Street to get to deregulate some of the new limits on their greedy behavior, for our kids to be flooded with imports of unsafe food because the agreement's many, many chapters of non-trade rules roll back all of those kinds of safeguards and build up all of those kinds of corporate rights. Well, you know, it, it really, and, and all this, by the way, for something that actually makes our trade deficit worse uh, by the most optimistic uh, measures, right? So, so in other words, and this is why in my introduction, Lori Wallach, I did not describe this as a trade deal, even though that's their preferred terminology, because it seems to me that what this really is, is, um, and, and you tell me if I'm overstating the case, but this seems to me more like a usurpation of democracy deal. This seems to me more like what we're really agreeing to do here is to override the rights of people to set their own health and safety standards, to set their own financial regulation standards, uh, and put them in the hands, as you say, of these uh, tribunals of three private attorneys, uh, all, most of whom in, his, in, in past practice where these tribunals have existed do corporate law work by and large. So they're going to be inclined toward the corporations when they make their rulings that are binding on democratically elected governments. Am I overstating the case? You are not in the least. In fact... A lot of these guys rotate between the role of suing the government for the corporation and being a judge in a case where another of their friends is the lawyer suing the government for the corporation. They have a little club. There are 15 of these lawyers who have been in 55% of these cases. It is incredibly conflicted, and literally they are paid by the, by the hour, not like a judge by salary, and the corporation picks one of the judges directly off the list. 
Well, you know, I, I looked at a report, I, I wrote about it actually, and I, I can't remember who did it, but it was an analysis of the past, uh, these, these secret tribunals, and they've ruled overwhelmingly in favor of corporations. They've especially ruled in favor of extremely large multi-billion dollar corporations and billionaire individuals, and these lawyers have made tens of millions of dollars off it. So why, you know, why aren't people more outraged about it. Why isn't it a slam dunk that the American people and their representatives in Congress are going to vomit this thing out when it comes up for a vote? I think that, number one, a lot of Americans do not know about the TPP in general and certainly don't know that at its heart, it's this outrageous investor corporate tribunal scandal. People just don't know. And number two, part of the reason they don't know, and this is this debate that should be a huge public debate is happening largely under the radar, is because the issue has been largely shut out of the mainstream media. I mean, imagine the notion of an entire nation state being dragged before three private attorneys, no conflict of interest laws. And by the way, these decisions are not subject to outside appeal. So you literally elevate an individual investor to the level of a nation state to privately enforce a public treaty in front of three private corporate attorneys whose decisions are not appealable. And there have been billions of dollars ordered paid out. And does anyone hear about these stories? I bet more people know who the Kardashians are than what the investor state dispute resolution system is. In fact, I'm certain of it. Oh, I so think by a factor of a, a thousand, probably. So, uh, so what can people do? What can we do? I mean, obviously, the TPP we need jobs, and Americans yeah. just have become basically are unaware of what it really is about, and that's all of our jobs. And if anyone who hears this finds this outrageous, for God's sakes, tell your friends on TradeWatch.org and ExposeTheTPP.org, ExposeTheTPP.org and TradeWatch.org, you can learn all about the outrageous corporate tribunals about the TPP. And if it seems too outlandish to believe, we have uh, a whole list of specific cases where, as you said, Chevron has gotten cash, Exxon has gotten cash, big companies you know the names of have raided treasuries and undermine environmental health, safety, and other laws. Okay, so we have uh, so we have a situation here where uh, where really what are called trade deals are deals that how do we put it that that overrule democracy itself and that create these privatized tribunals, corporate tribunals that give our money to Exxon and Chevron and corporations like that. We have uh, we have the very high likelihood that this thing is going to come up for a vote. What do we know about the possibility that this is in fact going to come up for a vote during uh, the lame duck session of Congress? I think that the administration is hell-bent on having this vote, and they are under the radar quietly flying cabinet secretaries all over the country and flying target members of Congress all over the world on Air Force One. Two of their targets are on the trip to Asia just now with the president, and they're trying to line up a majority of votes to have a vote in the lame duck session after the election so that the retired and the newly fired, those who lost their elections, will have the ability to vote not being accountable to their constituents. Even under the scenario of a lame duck vote, if we all do our jobs right, they will not have a majority. This is a fight in the House of Representatives. It's not in the Senate. So the thing everybody needs to do, and right this week coming up is Memorial Day recess. All the members of Congress are home for the next 10 days. We all need to get with our member of Congress member of the House of Representatives, not the Senators, whether a Democrat or a Republican, grab them at a Memorial Day parade, hold on to their hand, do not let go, eyeball them and say, will you commit to me to vote against the TPP? It's really important to hear from a lot of people everywhere they go. Will you commit to me to vote against this thing and I will commit to you, I will be watching you. Right? There you have it. All right. Well, Lori Wallach, uh, director of a Public Citizens Global Trade Watch, this is a critical fight. This could be a fight for, for God knows, millions of jobs and, and the independence of our own democracy and our right to regulate our health and safety. So thanks for fighting the good fight, and thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. Bye-bye.